Okay, our mic, our mute, our mics are live. <laughs> our mics are live. Our mouths are live. We're totally unmuted. We're here. We are here. Welcome. Welcome. Happy January. Almost in February. Kind of, yes. This is your kind of day, right? Do you have some snow where you are? It's it's actually just kind of a gray day today. We had a lot of snow yesterday, uh, like significant amount. I think we got yesterday and the night before what you guys had and down your way the day before. So I sort of think of you as the younger you when I see snow and I think of you going out and playing in the snow and making snow angels and skiing. So whenever I see <laughs> the snow, I think of you. It's not like something you would think of me like, oh, there she is enjoying the snow. I know you are and I know that's your thing. So let's introduce ourselves. Sure. Let me introduce you. Sure. Let's try that. Let's have a little fun today. All right, go for it. I'd like to introduce my amazing partner in BU Network, BU Network podcast and every aspect of what BU Network does. Today we're broadcasting to you live streaming. My partner is Dr. Energy, Dr. Joseph Piazza. He's in Ottawa, and I always feel like he's really close because he's got that good personality, you know, that type of personality. When I say good, it's not like there's a bad one, but he's like really right there with you. So I'm really fortunate to be able to call Dr. Energy my partner. And I would even say my partner in crime because we have a lot of fun <laughs> behind the scenes. We're giving you little pieces of it. We're, we're really passionate about what we do in communication. And Dr. Energy is so good at that. So my kudos to you and my introduction to Dr. Energy, Dr. Joseph Piazza. Thank you, Rara. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my seat here a little bit as we go. My okay. camera. I'm looking, I'm seeing, oh, I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> so let's just kind of change things. A little bit. There we go. That's much better. Wow. So it's great to be here. I'd like to introduce my partner, I'll get the other way over here, uh, Catherine Rara Asara Myers. I've known Catherine for, wow, nine, almost eight almost nine years now, I think. And Catherine is in Niagara-on-the-Lake, southwest of Toronto. For those of you who know where, where Niagara-on-the-Lake is, it's wine country in on, here in Ontario. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. One of these days, we'll get around to telling the story of Rara, of how the name came to be and where it came from. We'll share that. Rara is wonderful, dynamic, caring, and very grateful person. If you've ever had the opportunity to have her interact with you, you know just how much gratitude she has for you being in her life. So, Rara. Thank you. <laughs> this is cute. We're doing lives. If you're watching us for the first time, we're doing this for about three or four weeks now. So every week we come to you live and we usually introduce ourselves. I thought it'd be nice if we change it up a little bit. So if you are gonna come here every week, you're going to get something a little bit different when it comes to presentation. Imagine somebody coming to see you every week and wondering, will it be the same delivery? We'll, we'll show you a variety. I, I sort of like to think about what we do as a variety show. <laughs> we show you, it's like show and tell. We show you a variety of different ways to present different things. Sometimes, it's going to resonate with you and some things will be completely like out of your wheelhouse and you'll say, no, nope. I'm not, I'm never doing that. And that's okay because some of these things we'll never do more than once either because we try them out and see how we like it. And if we don't like it, we're like, that's not good for us. But when you're presenting, it's really good idea to be open-minded. So we are open-minded. What I want to give you a little bit about my background today. So this is my actual office. I call it my bridge room. I'm giving you a live background scenario with a little piece of me and something that someone gave me and it's important to me. So I wanted to give you an image, a snapshot, give you a lens of what I am like in my home and all the things that are surrounding me are things that I use during the course of the day. I call this room my bridge room, but you know, we could call it headquarters because it is the room where so <laughs> many things happen. 
we get to experiment. Dr. Energy and I are doing many different things behind the scenes to give you a good show, to give you an education, and to also show you what it's like to learn something with your friends and your colleagues. We're always improving, and hopefully you will get to see that right along with us. If there's anything that is a faux pas, something that you catch that we don't, Put it in the chat, let us know. Hey, I don't think that looks good, or I think that's amazing, or I don't see you or hear you. Usually we have Ingrid helping us out here, so I hope she joins us. But please let us know what you see. And as we would say, what you see is what you get. So we're really here to give you a good show today. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, you can, I'm gonna give you a little lowdown on my background as well. So this is, as I like to call it, the back cave or mission control. I actually have two monitors set up in front of me that you can't actually see here. So I can move things about. I can have the production software open in the background and I have Facebook open again as well. So I can see the comments there and I can interact as myself. And from the production software, I can interact with you as BU Network. We can inter interact with you as and post comments as BU Network. So it's a, it's a fun little way to have, you know, you can see over my shoulder here, I've got some colored lights here, a salt lamp, little uh, bike decal uh, plate. Actually, this is from when I did the 24 hours of adrenaline mountain bike race few years back. Uh, and you can see uh, Catherine's favorite. Let's see if I can point it right here. Gumby and Pokey right here on, on my desk. And uh, yeah, so this is my this is my mission control. I have the lights all set up the way I want and pretty much and it's all good. You know, we can give you different backgrounds. We can show you what it's like to put a you know, we have BU backgrounds and we can put a brick wall and we can put our name and our banner. We can show you those things. If ever you're interested, we can talk to you a little bit about like when you would use them. If you've ever noticed when you're talking to people, if I had that background behind me and I were perfectly still, if I'm perfectly still, it looks great. If I start to move a little bit, sometimes you see those shadows. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about when you make those choices, I like to move around a lot. You'll see me fidgeting. I'm just, I'm being me. This is how I am. You know, if I stood still, it would be tough. So I like to give you the real me. And with my true background, I feel that you get to know a little bit more. <clears throat> if I did need to put something there because we were doing a promotion, I'm sure I could control myself. And Dr. Energy is actually controlling all of the optics that you see with our names going across. He's choosing who goes first and who goes second and who's in the front and who's in the back. He could actually mute me as I'm talking. If he doesn't like something I say, he can just hit the button. I wouldn't do that. I can even inject, eject people from the studio, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have a controller, when you're doing something, understand if you're doing it alone, you need to think about all of those things. You know, sometimes these things look easy because you, you see someone and they say, you know, I'm doing my podcast or I'm doing my live. And sure, it's easy. Every time you do it, it gets easier. But there are many things that you might want to implement. So we are implementing messages and banners across the screen. We're telling you about our right. newest podcast that was just released today. And if you were doing this live by yourself using these platforms, you might look distracted. We've decided to take the task and divide that so that it does look a little bit more natural. Exactly. And when Dr. Energy is controlling something and he has to look down or away, I'm speaking. So we want to give you that as a tip as well. When you are giving a presentation for one minute or five minutes, how you look in the background and how you sit and land in your space is very evident. So if you're fidgeting and looking around and managing it, it does take away from your message. Yes. And so you and can sit still. Sorry, go ahead. And that's and that's what we wanted to talk about today was how you use your stage presence, how you engage with your audience, how do you move on camera or on a stage if you're in front of a live room, which not many too many, too many people are at the moment. But it can the similar a lot of the things apply here on, on camera as well. So before we jump into some more of those aspects, we've given you a little bit on, on how the background affects, you know, when to use a green screen or virtual mm -hmm. background and when not to and, and what some of the pros and cons are. I'd just like to share with you, you know, we I just shared in the chat our latest podcast episode 
uh, on our from our website. It's a it's a great place to go to listen to Rhonda. She has a business called the Energy Institute, and on this particular episode, we talk about the new. Chinese Lunar New Year. Ron is very big into feng shui and using that to consult with people and help them figure out where to go and decisions to make and how to decorate their their homes, etc., so that they can get be the most in alignment with the energy that is going on in the world at the moment. So we spent some time speaking with her about about that. The new lunar year, lunar year. Pardon my slip of my tongue now. The new lunar year begins, uh, I believe, February 2nd or 4th. I can't remember which which day. Do you remember, Catherine? No? Okay, I don't remember. No. No. But I do know that the um, that a lot of what she talked about here was about line, aligning with the energy. It's going to be a slow and steady kind of year. It's not going to be a year of rapid wild growth it's going to be more of a rebuilding it's actually the first year in a new cycle as well so that's usually when we start to rebuild so go give it a listen give us give us a shout out maybe you know send us some comments let us know how what you think of it and we'd be really really interested in hearing that and then after you listen to it if you'd like to get in touch with Rhonda, you can go to our website and take a look at the show notes and there will be links there for you to make direct contact with her and you can ask her questions so every week that we come live to you prior to this live maybe by an hour you could check your inbox and you can see that we will have sent you that episode and then we'll come on live and we'll have a chance to tell you a little bit about what you can expect. You could subscribe, obviously, to our newsletter, or you could go onto any of the platforms and you can subscribe and find out that way. We'd like Rhonda to know how much we appreciate that she has been our guest twice. And that was the second time that ever happened that made BU network podcast mm -hmm. history and it was really fun it was it's a lot of fun you know you get to know someone you see them you speak with them and then sometimes you don't get to speak to them again because you're busy but in our case building relationships is really important and to Rhonda too because she's very good at that so mm -hmm. you can go and listen to her, go and listen to her again and and connect with her yep. that's a little bit about the other that's what we do there is another aspect I wanted to talk about today before we go into our stage presence we have the good fortune to have amazing people in our lives that come to us and ask us questions about you know, how do you do that or if I want to <laughs> speak to an audience like what do you think about that and right we do attend webinars so I, I sort of want to give you this idea if you would like us to attend one of your webinars as a guest and then ask us what you know we can do to help or assist then shoot us that information like let us know when you're hosting webinars let us know if they're free, if they have ticket prices, let us know all the situations that you have. And if we're available, we will either join together as we did recently this week for one of our very good friends. And we both attended her webinar. So it might just be that it works out in our schedule and you might want us yeah. to be in the audience so we can give you some real feedback as opposed to you telling us once we see it <laughs> and we hear it, you know, we have like, right on the spot like I, I think that's awesome so we make ourselves available to go above and beyond and we want to attend your events the way you're attending ours we'd like to give back exactly so let's jump into a little bit more about stage presence and movement um i'd like to start with with one of the one of the important things to remember when you're on stage and connecting with your audience and that is eye contact I see so many people, and because we're so much online now, it's a lot easier to do when we're in person to do the eye contact because we we're, we're actually feel like we're having a real conversation with people when we're in the same room. Whoop, bang my mic there. There's something to not do. <laughs> but when we're on camera, it becomes challenging to maintain the eye contact. We tend to want to look, when we're talking, we tend to want to look at the screen to see people's responses. And it's okay to glance over there every once in a while, but you try want, want to try and maintain 
eye contact with your camera. One of the things you can do to help yourself maintain that eye contact when you're speaking so that you're looking at the camera is take uh, like a sticky note with a, or you know, you can get those ones that are like in the shape of an arrow and stick it to your camera, right beside your camera, pointing at your camera. It's just a visual reminder to look at your camera. The other challenge, especially when you're in Zoom or uh, WebEx or one of those or Skype, is hide the view of yourself because the view that you see there is reversed. It's not a mirror image and it looks a little odd and we tend to want to look at ourselves on the screen rather than looking at the camera. So turn the self view off and focus on the camera. Great points. I was looking for a sticky arrow note. I was going to show it. <laughs> or you can get some, you know, it's even more fun. Get a nice, get a pair of sticky googly eyes and put it over top of the camera. And then it looks and makes it, it's making googly eyes at you. Put a smile on your face when you're communicating as well as looking at the camera. And it depends. Thank you. That's a great tip. And if, when, it depends on the camera that you have. So uh, we have external cameras. So there are cameras built into our devices and we would like to use upgraded cameras. So we do, and it, we can move it around. So I want to give you an idea. So you can adjust. We were talking to someone about this today. You want to make sure that you're not looking too much at the ceiling. You want to make sure that you have a good eye level, eye contact, and that you're not looking down into your audience. We always want to look good. I understand, but we are what we are. So we can accept that. And then look at the whole composition, the whole picture. I have LED lights behind me as well. And that gives a different effect. I'm close to them. So you can see down below my bookcase, there's a little blue light. Sometimes I have them flashing. When you're sitting, standing, sometimes standing is even better, and you're looking at your camera, have confidence that you've looked the best you can. I always say this, don't fidget. Like just don't wear one of those things that's going to drive you crazy. Don't have a wardrobe malfunction. I play, with, not my I play with my glasses all that's the time. That's normal, so. but that's, that's like a normal habit, right? But if you have something like ladies, you know, if you have one of these things that just isn't, or gentlemen, something that's just not fitting right, be comfortable. Think of it as your uniform, you're on stage, you're presenting, relax, know that you look the best you can and give your best. If you're going to talk about a story, think about looking at your audience. Don't worry what you look like anymore. That's over. <laughs> you know, you look good. We're past that. And think about how close you are to your mic. You don't want to be bending, you want to have good posture. Think about the modulation of your voice. If I speak really loud, you'll hear that. And if I speak softly, you might lean in. So in addition to how you look at the audience, think about how you sound to the audience. Be clear. If you have an accent, if you have something with your voice, be it, own it, do it, be you. Yes. Don't try to be someone else. If that's how you speak, that's how you speak. But think about, we speak at about 150 words a minute. How about it? If you're giving a two minute presentation in your head, you might really want to go fast and say something. Slow it down. Take your time. Take a breath. Let people digest what you have to say. So what Dr. Energy said is really important. Look into the camera. Be confident that you're the best you can be and think about your voice. Some people have a really good radio voice. They can talk, especially when you get real close to the microphone and talk like this. Hey there, hi there, ho there, Buffalo Bob. Sounds great. I love it. When you get close to the mic, your voice does sound a little different and you can really play with it. You can talk real close to it like this. <laughs> so we know that. Here? know that when you don't have any cameras on, when you listen to our podcast, we have our cameras on now for the two of us to see each other, but you won't see us. So if you hear our voice, like sure, we could turn the volume up, but when we get close to it, we're making an effect. And you want to be able to have a positive effect on your audience by looking at them and thinking about what they hear. Nothing worse than listening to a presenter that you really can't hear. 
And nothing worse than listening to a presenter that's speaking too close to the mic. Find the right distance. It's about a fist. Check your equipment. Ask us to do a, an equipment check with you. How about a video audit? Before you go live, ask us for 15 or 20 minutes and let's do a check-in and see how that sounds. Take two pair of eyes, two pair of ears, and see what that's like. As we're asking you, let us know how this is for you. Right, Dr. Energy? Yeah, exactly. Pop it in the comments. Next thing I'd like to, to chat about is hand movements, hand, especially because we're on camera. A lot of us sit. Some people like to stand. I, I like to do both. Uh, in fact, one of, my, one of the purchases that I want to make is a sit-stand desk so I can alternate between sitting and standing. I find that I have better energy presenting when I stand. So when I'm sitting, I try to replicate that as much as possible. I try to ground my feet on the floor and sit more erect with chest up, shoulders back, much the way I would when I'm standing so that I have good energy, the breath can flow through my whole body and I can be alert and present. The other thing is notice that I'm being purposeful with my hand movements, either towards the camera or from one side to the other. Now remember when you're presenting on camera, and this is something you should be doing, taking into account when you're live as well. When you're facing your audience, left and right is reversed. Uh, most cultures, Western cultures, we actually read from left to right. So you see what I did there as I went from the left side of your screen to the right side of the screen. It's actually opposite for me. For me, I'm actually right now moving from the, my right side of my body and gesturing across the left side so that you see it as forward movement. And when I do it the other way, that's backwards movement. It's just a little tip that you can play with when you are talking to people. So for the same reason, when you're standing on stage and you wanna talk about something that happened in the, the past, you wanna move over to your right. And then when you wanna talk in the present, come into the middle. And then when you talk, talk about something that's in the future, move over to your left or to your audience's right. And they will see the flow of that across. Sorry, this way, say I did it backwards myself. <laughs> That's a great tip. Not everybody is, is aware of that. And I'll add to that with, forget that you have notes. I really don't like notes. Personally, they mess me up. I need to do it where I know the content. And even if I don't have it memorized, I just need to know the content. When you're telling a story, so if most of us are greeting people online these days saying hi and who we are and something about us and our name. A lot of people want to know what's your name and what do you do? Okay. For the fifth time today, or you can be creative and ask people a different set of questions. If you are the person answering the question, whether you like the question or not, be memorable. If you're telling a story to be memorable, be memorable. There are filler words that people tend to use, and I invite you to lose those filler words. Um, and so, um, let me check. These filler words. It's one thing when you're in a live conversation, when you have a minute or two minutes or three minutes to speak, I really want you to hear what I have to say. And I'd like to give you content. So I'll tell you a story about how I jumped out of the plane and how I was holding the hand of my partner. <laughs> and I went to pull that parachute and you're not going to believe what happened. I want to flow with that story so that I have you on the edge of your seat. Yes. Very good. Now, before we jump into the next one, I just want to, if you're, you know, if you're finding value in these live streams, we're actually taking them and putting them on our YouTube channel as well. So you can find them all in one place. You don't have to go searching through all our Facebook feed 
to find them again. I just popped the link for our YouTube channel there in, in the comments. Go over there to YouTube, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and then ding the bell so you get notifications when we post another video. Uh, we're going to be continually putting these live videos there, and as a small secret, we're eventually going to be doing live streams on YouTube as well. And we might even be doing something with the podcast over on YouTube. Shh. <laughs> oh, because we have to grow and stretch and learn and produce and perform just like you do in your business. And this is a, how is a billion dollar business? How big is this business that we're in here? This online courses and podcasting. It's one of the biggest businesses. It's like right billion now. dollar plus, right? A couple billion dollars or something. Billion dollars and beyond, baby. Yeah. Badab. Badab. Yeah. So that's <laughs> something that's near and dear to us. So when you're in an industry that moves fast, you really have to find your niche. Don't worry about what anybody else does. Be you. Your niche is there. You know what you're good at. You know the content that you're providing. And there's somebody who will come and listen and watch you. Perhaps you need a little exploration about that or slight redirection about that come and talk to us we'll we'll tell you what we see and then we'll see if there's something else out there for you today we want to give you these structured tips mm. we say structured because it's probably easier to listen to a structured and watch a structured video than rambling if we were comedians <laughs> we're going to give you a you know sebastian maniscalco type yeah. thing we just ramble on and, and you know keep you laughing but these lives are dedicated to giving you content about presentations if you want our comedy show well that's another channel right so what is our next tip i gave a couple of mine what's one of your favorite ones one of my favorite tips <laughs> I'm always about how we look on stage. I want to go back to that for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Think about your background, your stage. Think about your lighting. And think about how you look and what you're presenting. So if you want to come across with pearls and a little black sweater and you want to be a little bit more serious, then let your voice match your image. If you're in your yoga clothes, as I have been often, know that that's the image that you're projecting. Hopefully the content makes sense with that image, that you're going to talk about something where it, it sort of is acceptable. Think about the whole picture. So look at your background, look at what you're wearing, think about what you're going to say, be confident, and let that whole package be the real deal. Your audience knows when you're not being real and they might feel for you. They might have empathy for you, but you want to give them, but it's another word that negates everything. <laughs> you, want, you want to give your audience what they came for. Right. They may not come back. They may not show up. The whole audience can't be busy that day. So if right. you're not getting anybody giving you feedback, then take a look at that. So I invite you to look at the entire picture and think about what you're wearing and know that you are beautiful. Once you make the decision, go with it. Absolutely. So I just like to add to that a little bit. When you're up on, when you're on stage or you're the speaker on camera, speak and move in a way that is somewhat natural to you as well. If you are a gregarious, outgoing, very external person who talks with their hands a lot, kind of like I do, speak like that. If you tend to be a more reserved person and you don't move quite as much on stage, that's okay too, or on camera, use that, be that reserved, but be who you are, be your natural self on stage or on camera. And I'll add to that, angles matter, ladies and gentlemen. The angle of the camera, if you have a side that you prefer over <laughs> another side, it matters. If that camera is too low, it's looking up your nose. If it's too high, understand that you need to position yourself just like you do on stage. 
So rehearse about that with someone and know if you're too close, it might not be the same. And if you're too far, you have to think about that lighting and that microphone and whatever setup you have. If you're using a laptop, then get closer to it, lift it up. Put some books under it or something. Right. If your equipment is a little bit more advanced, then learn the equipment and learn how to enhance. You can always enhance what, what you have. And if you really have a great setup and you've invested all kinds of money, I recommend you use your equipment. Don't just own it, but use it. Use it for special effects. See how it works out. Sorry. My Alexa yells at me. Yeah, you were muted, Dr. Energy. So um, my Alexa talks to me every day at 9 and 1130. Think about those things too. Think about the external things that are happening and go with it. The other thing is no matter what happens, let it be part of what you're doing and be natural and handle it because, well, no one knows what's supposed to be part of your presentation or not. And if something does throw off your presentation, go with it. And one other thing I want to share with you really helps to have a glass of water or a cup. If you have an audience that is live and someone asks you a question, you can say, that's a really great question. Does anybody have an answer for that? Pick up your glass, have a sip of water, let the audience answer your question. So in terms of natural and being natural, allow yourself to come through and to invite your audience to be part of your presentation. That's one of, that is one of my favorite strategies and I can't believe you stole it from me today. <laughs> Such a strategy stealer. <laughs> I love it too. That is, that is a great, it's a great strategy to use and it engages your audience as well. They get to interact with you and also contribute to the presentation or the speech or whatever is going on. And so you're adding value for them and for yourself as well, because you, you never know what somebody's going to say from the audience. It might be something like, oh, hey, that's a really great idea. I'm going to incorporate that into my next presentation, or my next speech or whatever, whatever it might be. So I've got one more. Yep, go ahead. Oh, I just I want to add to working with a partner as talking about picking up a glass of water. When you have a partner, also when your partner is speaking, relax, let them talk. And I can, and your partner can know to go solo on the screen while the other person takes a drink or fixes their hair or whatever they need to do. And then you can bring them back and voila. So this is some of the fun with doing it on video. So I've got one more tip that I'd really like to share before we wrap this up today. And that's when you're counting and you're enumerating things on stage or when you're speaking with your hands or demonstrating, you know, something is really, I'm just gonna go solo here for a second. So I have more camera space to work with. So when you're presenting with your, and you're saying something is this big, have your palms facing open and facing your audience. Or if you're counting, so I'm counting one, two, three, versus one, two, three. Or when I'm saying, oh, it's this big, it makes a difference where your palms are facing, having them out, or when you're, if you're standing with your hands at your side, just have, let your arm, I can't see it here, just let your arms hang, but with your palms, you know, facing out a little bit, it has a more open feel to it, and your audience will feel more like they're part of what's going on, rather than when I show the back of my hand, it feels closed, or it almost feels like a fist coming at you, versus if I count this way. That's a really good point. Think about the audience and how they feel when they're looking at you, you might say, well, I'm, I'm counting and I'm showing you this, but that invitation to the other person is what will wow your audience. Think of a singer, think of someone you really enjoy listening to. Think of them performing on stage. <laughs> think of the show that they give you. I think of Elton John. Hmm. I think of Barbra Streisand. Freddie Mercury, right? I, I Think of 
Oh, I'm going to think of all these different Chicago, the Eagles. Um, David Bowie. Oh, gosh. Think of all these different people that put on shows for you. When you're listening and enjoying someone, you're getting drawn in. So make the gestures that draw people in. And try to be relaxed and not too rigid because people want a piece of you. They want to know who you really are. And they want to hear what you have to say. So yes, put up a great performance, have wonderful content, be aware of all these things. It may seem like it's a lot. A good performer is going to do it very naturally. But even on the best of days, there is all type of technical difficulties. So Mm -hmm. experience it. Keep doing what you're doing. If the lights go off, keep talking. If the sound (laughs) goes off, Get another device. Have a second device ready. Anything can happen. Be ready. We once did a live show and our guest couldn't get on and she was on on the phone. And we were doing a, (laughs) it was with our camera on on Gratitude Girls, actually. Mm. And she just came came in on her phone. You, You have to have alternatives. So when you're presenting, know that no one really knows what you're going to say. So if you cut your presentation short, or if you do something in it, they might think it's part of what you're doing. Just feel that it's natural to you. And if you want to make an excuse about something, go right ahead. But again, you're putting on a show and you're teaching someone something that you know, and you might have you might have an edge to you. We, we like to give it to you straight. We like to give you clear, concise information. And then if you want something a little bit more relaxed, then by all means, you can reach us and we'll be happy to speak with you about that. Dr. Energy, you're putting up some wonderful links for us. Yep. So this would be, if you want to get some more tips like these, a little bit more structure, this is a a link at b-u.network forward slash pro, you can go there, sign sign up for that, and we're going to email you some tips to take some of what we've been teaching here and how to make your presentation engaging when you're designing your presentation and be able to connect more fully with your audience. If you happen to have a presentation that just went south, don't fret. You can do it again. If you have the presentation of your lifetime and you say, I want them all like that, we can help you with the structure for that. But remember that each presentation has its own life and let each bit of information that you give shine on its own. So whether you're learning to do Facebook lives or you're opening up a YouTube channel like we are, we have a whole strategy for that. Or or it's the first time that you're networking or you're seasoned and you have a brand new show, book, or program that you're selling for $100 to $50,000. It's the same process. We still have to go out and reach our audience. So if you would like to discuss that with us, you'd like another BU opinion on that, well, we're here. We'd love to hear you. Absolutely. So head on over to our website, b-u.network forward slash contact and get in touch with us uh, or go over to YouTube on our YouTube channel and make put some comments in on the videos on what you like in the videos, uh, any questions you might have. We'll be happy to answer the questions. You can put questions here. If you're watching the replay, we'll, we'll get on and answer the questions as well. We're here to be of value and of service to you in whatever presenting needs you might have. Thank you, Dr. Energy. It was a pleasure. Thanks to our audience and see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. We we might just be delivering it in a different way. (laughs) (laughs) Ciao. Tease, tease. Ciao. Um.